So in this one, we are going to be creating an HTTP trigger, which is an Azure function. And uh, let's just jump right to it. So first, let's go to our Vision Studio. Create a new project. And we have to select an Azure function. Selecting the other function. Next, let's name it as SPP trigger. Now I'm going to be creating it on the desktop. Let's select create. And here you can see multiple other functions. So we're going to be creating the HTTP trigger first. Let's create. And let's go to scaffold the code at first. Okay, so there we go. And here you can see the name of a uh, Azure function. So you can change that if you want. HTTP trigger. And here you can see the authorization level of the function. And if you want, we can use a get or a post. And uh, here you can save this. And there you can see that this uh, scaffolding board has a query which is name, and it's going to display the name if you pass it in the URL. So, for example, if we run this, and there you can see that uh, Pop up window has appeared. So, yes, we are going to allow this. So, you can see that on this URL, it's going to be the HTTP trigger. So, if you copy this and let's just run this, you can see that the response has been generated. So, if we pass a name query here, name. So it's going to appear there. And here you can see that our HTTP trigger has been successfully executed. So what you can use the HTTP trigger for? So let's say that uh, <clears throat> you can like uh, have a folder here that uh, let's say a script that you need to trigger after like uh, some operation has been done. So you can just place it here and uh, you can like connect it using tag zero or something like that. And you can trigger it multiple times if you want. So for example, I have uh, like, created a video on how I automated some let's say NPM commands. And there you can see a practical like uh, example how I have like uh, consume Azure function. So now let's deploy this. You're going to be deploying it on Azure. Next. Next. And here, how to select the resource group. So let's name it as is only and it's going to be central India. It is based on consumption plan. I'm going to be selecting the nearest region and uh, let's use free one. Okay, 
okay and let's create this so it's going to take some time Well, we can close this if you want. So this has been generated. Let's click finish. Now it's going to be published. So before that, you have to also configure some dependencies, like if you want applications inside or not. So for now, let's uh, not going to use this. And let's publish. So wrap is published. So let me just copy this URL. Let's paste this. You can see our function app is wrong. But to see the output, uh, let's uh, head on to our Azure. And uh, previously, that you have seen that uh, if we have executed our Azure function using our local host, it was giving us a response that our function is executed. 
but you like you, I have just copied the URL, so it was not there. So if I add on the API, let's say if we go to our resource group. Here you can see our Azure function. So here you can see that we have written our URL. So if I just refresh this again, again. And let's refresh this. Here you can see that our URL has been written. That was when I refresh this. Now, if we head on to our functions, there is our HTTP trigger. And let's copy the URL from here. And here you can see our Azure function has generated a response. And previously we have passed a name query here, so let's pass it here also. And name and here you can see the response has been generated, and this time it was using our publish as a function, which is an HTTP trigger. So that was all about the HTTP trigger. And uh, let's move on to the next 